So I'm just, um, I've spooled it and now I'm just putting it on this, um, it's like a welding rod um, and I've literally just uh, glued the welding rod um, because I need it to be really thin um, just because you can see the center here is really small so I'm just going to be able to fit it through. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's really tight. <laughs> oh man, it's like sewing there. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool though. Yeah, so I had um, I had left the chat because um, I was on the screen and we couldn't see what Ben was doing, and then suddenly there was no sound. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, yeah, I don't know either, man. I just came in and everybody in the chat was saying no sound, so I thought I'd fix everything for him while he got his thing up and running. You're the best, Nathan. <laughs> right on. It really is the best. I appreciate it. <laughs> Because the, the lab is over here, and I can't really see the screen when I'm setting things up. All right. So how much wire is that on that spool you, you have in your hand? I don't know how many feet this is, but in meters, it's a 30 meters, um, 60 feet. Okay. Uh, times uh, 24 um of um this is um i think it's 0 0.35 millimeter so it's very like fairly thin wire um and i should have plenty to to do this this big ones really nice so, so you're looking at about 28 gauge is that is that kind of yeah yeah spot on yeah yeah and um i've so I'm hoping that this is the right way to do it. Um, so I've, I've counted the the grooves on here. I don't know if you can see it here. I've counted the grooves. Okay. And I've got exactly 14. So um, so obviously I'll I'll count down from seven back and then start my counterclockwise on this on this little groove here. Very good. I like the way that you colored it, so you know where you started at. Yeah, and then the clockwise is the 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 the, the black one. The counter is the red one. Right on. Yeah, that's quite big. This one it's uh, uh, ten inches wide by five inch high. Is there any particular reason why you went with the size that you did? Yeah. Yeah, because I've got a, a Prusa printer, um, and the the Prusa printer, um, the maximum width you can go on the MK3 Plus S is uh, 20 centimeter, which is about 10 inches. So that's the maximum diameter gotcha. for the printer. And what I've done is um, it's like you can literally slide them out. Nice. So... I mean, it's quite difficult. It's quite uh, friction fitted, so it's just with friction. But yeah, that's very good. So yeah, so this so the diameter is the 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 size of the print bed. Okay. Yeah, and I like, uh, I like the fact that it doesn't have the hooks that come over. It it it, it just has the slide in. Yeah, that's nice. And then the the base the base has some grooves where I can slide the rings. Very good. And it's just friction fitted, really. Well, that's all you need. Once the wire's on there, it's going to hold it. As long yeah. as it just holds it while you wire it, you're good. I and mean, you can see it's pretty tight friction fit. Yeah, that's very nice. <laughs> So I don't know if I want to wind eight counterclock and eight clock or or three six nine. So maybe I could do six counterclock wise turn and then six clock wise, get the four wires out and then try to um, try to do a figure eight. So um, like a Mobius, like a Mobius type. Um, so that would be. Um, the instead of having the same wire connected, I'd have the opposite wire connected. So it's a Mobius 8. 
and then and and try to put the multimeter on it and when i um put the frequency on the channel a for example i want to see if there's any interaction with this inner coil here which is right right on the on the rim right on the in the 90 degree right in the middle of the right in the middle here so and it's it sits perfectly in the groove actually like the thickness of the wire is a perfect fit it's like nice and tight um so nice yeah so i'll just do uh, probably um because you know there's those numbers three six nine so i might try the six maybe so i've done i've done just the, the wire inside um the sort of 90 degree wire if you like and i've done three counter clock and three clock and i'm just going to show you here what it looks like and then i'll go for dinner uh just give me one sec i'll just finish this bit here okay here we go yeah that's done so um so there it is so i've got the mm, yeah i've got the free counterclock and the free clockwise and i've got um four wires coming out of it one two three four and i'm gonna cut this in half and then do a, a mobius wind um on the on the center of of this this torus this poe coil That looks really, really good. So there's there's that um, 90 degree coil right here, and then there's the those those are the wires for the 90 degree coil. Yeah, I think I'll 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 try to do this Mobius shape, and um, and then and then try to change the frequency on the channel A, for example, and then try to see if we get anything out from that center pickup coil which is right right in the center like right in the center of the torus shape oh yeah i see that yeah right here so there's three counterclockwise and three round clockwise and we'll, we'll see what happens really that's really cool i'm really excited to see that one yeah. Yeah, so like Ben said, um, when I got to the the junction, which is the starting point. So when I got to the starting point, which was above that, that's my starting point right here. Okay. So when I came back to this, I went just down this way. So, so when I came, I did a full, a full, all the way back to here. I went just back down this way now. So I'm out. Now I'm going um, counterclockwise. So if you look at this this way here, uh, we're going counter, and then now I'm going clockwise. Very good work. Very good work. A lot of people get that wrong. So hold on. Show that, that junction again. It doesn't. It doesn't bend, right? So no, no. It it is a bend. You you are bending it for the the uh, interference pattern, but it, the bend doesn't really matter because that's you know kind of like a null point in the. Oh, there the, it is. Okay. Yeah. This one here, yeah. Nice. So instead instead of going back to this one here, which is the starting point, I went one step down, which is right here, uh, this way here. Yes. And then I'm I'm going the other way, which nice. is this one here. Uh, where am I? This one here. So now I'm doing the clockwise wind. Uh, um, so yeah, so that's that's where I'm at. Whenever you do the the first wind of the clockwise and the counterclockwise, it's always a little confusing until you get the first one set, and then you kind of can follow it, you know. Nice. So as you can see. He just started the interference pattern. I think he's on the second wind. 
Yeah. And uh, it, it gets a little less confusing as you continue winding it and you have something to, to reference as you go around. So, uh, and it looks like the, the spool that he made, which is amazing, amazing job on that spool. It uh, looks like it's working out for him perfectly. So you know, this is this is what you get for really planning out before you actually do something. You know, I used to just, oh, let me just do something. No, no, let's sit down and think it through, plan it out a little bit, and and then you you have a, a nice neat experience like this. Well, actually, maybe I can talk about the mistake I did on the. I did a small one. I did a small. Um, small version of this one and uh, so th and this one i made a mistake um because when i hook up the the channel a and channel b um what was happening is um i measured the the resistance for channel a and it was eight ohms mm -hmm. and then i measured the resistance for channel b and it was three ohms and so oh, i realized yeah. I, I hooked it up the wrong way uh because yeah, it should be the yeah, same right exactly yeah. So I had to cut, I cut everything off and start it again. And um, I, I put the, the starting wire on one side and then the end of that wire I connected to a different one and then kept on going like that um, um, evenly. So if channel A has 12 or 12 layers, then channel B should have 12, 12 wires. Right. So yeah, that was one of the mistakes I did and, and um, it's a good thing I tested it because it was completely wrong. No, that's that's right. Exactly. That's uh, one of the reasons is I made a mistake on uh, a couple of them myself. Uh, these past two ones, I made uh, the same mistake, actually. And I don't know how, how it happened, but uh, all the connections worked. You know, I tested the continuity of all the leads. And then when I go to series them up into two channels, uh, one wire on both of the coils now um, just doesn't... Uh, uh, retain continuity right i cannot get it to to you know like have push the energy from one end to the other so i had to go back on the big one the fireball and disconnect one from channel a you know i had to unwind the the tape and the bundle and all that stuff very delicately and and un and just even out the channels like i did and then honestly that that's probably the best thing i could have done because i made the mistake uh the same or the same thing happened um well i'm not sure which mistake i made if anybody knows what what could have caused that please let me know but uh uh the same thing happened in mark one the rodent coil that i the smaller rodent coil that i built and uh it's working so uh, i think the best thing that that i could do is is try to replicate that as close as possible you know and and you know that's using 11 so i'll, I'll be using 11 for the fireball it works out but it's just unfortunate you know Yeah, look at that. That's so cool the way he does that part right there. Because mm -hmm. he's going into the center wind now. Yeah. And what, what you don't really realize is it's actually coming out and going. It's it's making like a little S turn in the inside of the tour. And it's coming out and going like in the opposite direction, spiraling. It's It's really cool. And this one looks a lot closer to uh, Daniel and Erica Nunez's uh, frame. I know you have one with less spokes. That's the frame that I'd like to print out next and uh, try to, you know, maybe get exactly an exact replica of their PoE Vortex. So so that's a really good point that you brought up because that was um, when I, I, designed, I designed this version here, it's a lot flatter. So you can see the rings are really um, low. Um, they're very like shallow rings, and then you can see those rings are really high. So and then so I wanted to get a really high, a different gradient. So a really high, a really high high, and then a, a, a very strong slope. So I, I wanted a, a much uh, a, a very similar to what uh, Erica and Daniel had um, with their the the big rings they had not. This one is a bit smaller, smaller rings, but I'll still use that one. I still want to test it. Uh, but I, I think I want to 
stay close to their design, um, which I mean, this one I, I made myself. Um, but um, yeah, just 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 for replication's sake, I'm trying to be as close as possible to what 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 I've seen really. So yeah, and then that 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 extra depth it really does help. You know, keep the wire in place while you're twisting it and all that. So. Um, yeah, I can see the advantages of, of why they did all the things that they did with their frames. Hmm. I'm definitely going to be using that frame next, though. That's that's the frame that I'm going to be using next. Um, and then, you know, as soon as I get the the smaller frame printed, I'll do some tinkering with that. That's gonna that's gonna be a little while before we get a working prototype of that 3.0 coil, though. You said that was 28 gauge? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. Give or take. 0.33 on the wire. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. And how many strands of that was there, Michael? Uh, 24. But you know what? I'm wondering. Um, because, you know, looking at the designs they've done, it looks like maybe we can go even higher numbers and maybe the higher the better. Is it possible? Yes, I was thinking the same thing, Michael. Um, and I was also thinking about maybe doing uh, um, numbers that add up to three or nine, you know, like uh, 36, for instance. That's really interesting, Ben, because I was, I was the more... I work on those things, and the more I'm thinking about coil geometry, and 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 you know, so in in Europe, we I mean, we we think in in metric system, right? Um, but I think one of the, you know, the was it the thunderstorm generator? You know, the the guy was saying that we should really measure things in inches because those comes from the qubits. They are like. Yes the gods numbers or whatever they're called. And um, so I think next time I, I design a coil, I want to do it in, in inches because this is not exactly 10 inches, you know? So, mm. so I want the, I want the, where the coil sits, I want it to be exactly 10 inches. And then same for the height. I want to, I want to do everything like really like precise. So the minute it's not, it's not very precise. Nothing is very precise. So and, but, sorry, Ben. Oh no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say it. It just, it just, you know, it, when I when I hear Marco Rodan talking about numbers, 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 three six nine, you know, it's you know, it's all those numbers, and it, it's 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 a precise thing, right? So I I want to if I can get the frame right to start with, and then obviously the 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 numbers are the more important. But I think I think there are some experts on that show about coil binding, you know, about doing the star shaped coil and all the. And, and it can be applicable for this, but I just I don't know how to to wind this beautiful mandala pattern, for example. Because this would be amazing to have a, a mandala pattern, but I don't I don't really know how to do it. And perhaps the trick is to go back on the the flat the flat coining, you know, the coil, the star, just like Nathan's been doing. Uh, Nathan's been doing some uh, incredible job, you know. Um, and I, I got inspired actually from Nathan about the the stuff he's done. Um, you know the the sacred pattern that he's done uh, in his program, and uh, got really inspired on that because um, it is so true. Um, and and if if could apl apply it to a, a like a three D shape, then but I, obviously I don't know. Like nobody taught me how to do those things, right? So no, exactly. It's uh you know it's something that we all have to learn as we're doing too. You know, it's a process that we learn through experience as well. These coils. You can't you you can't just look up how to how to build one and just you know right off the bat build a, a perfect one and you're gonna make mistakes and it's gonna happen. But um, going back to what you were saying about God's measurements, that's uh, that's very important to con that I, and something that I hadn't previously previously considered until now. Uh, you raise a good point because uh, just to, uh, think about how we you know kind of gone to the wrong tuning in the 440 compared to 432, right? I guess it would be kind of analogous to that, you know, where we're, we're, we're close, but we're not precise. And that, that little bit off could be what's uh, creating 
or not creating some of the effects that we're, you know, trying to look for. 100%. Yeah. Oh, he's getting ready to dunk it. Yeah, almost finished, guys. Almost finished. Almost. So when you put it through the tour, you got to be very careful. Sometimes uh, things get caught on some of the spools. But he's got a pretty good frame. The spool that I'm using, the, the or the, the frame that I'm using, is kind of more pointy. So if you're using the Dragon 7 spool, keep or um, I keep saying spool. If you're using the Dragon 7 frame, uh, uh, keep that in mind that you will have to, you know, uh, keep an eye on the, the spool as it goes through. It doesn't get tangled or caught on something. Yeah, so I made a small mistake, but um, it's fixed now. I just have to retrace back. Um, I had missed, missed the turn, so, but yeah, it's, it's nearly done, I think. Man, you're winding it fast. It looks like you just got a feel for it, like after a while. Yeah, um, I think um, I j I'm just following. Um, I'm just I'm just following the. Oopsie here. I'm just following this 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 one here. So the path of this one now. So I think the first the first few turns are the most difficult, and then once you've got your lines um, set, then you can you can just follow the the next the ne next line, and somehow I managed to make a mistake in the way, but uh, I'm getting there now. I think, yeah. Nice, very nice. It's okay. Yeah, it's looking good, man. Thanks, man. Very very even, very straight, very neat. <laughs> 